The government signalled it will reconsider rules that cap the number of people at religious services at 10, while by comparison, hundreds of more shoppers are free to arguably worship at the altar of consumerism. The Catholic Church is holding online services because the limit of 10 people at a service is not really workable. But Mass has been off altogether for eight weeks and might not completely return to normal until there is a coronavirus vaccine. Last week, the government pulled a U-turn on funeral numbers, raising the limit from a maximum of 10 guests to 50. The Catholic Archbishop of Wellington, Cardinal John Dew, is hopeful rules will change so people can get back to church sooner rather than later. While it's hard for people, it's hard for all of us, we've been disappointed, we're prepared to go along with that in order to keep people safe in the hope that it will change fairly soon. And in actual fact, just this afternoon at, um, at one o'clock, Dr Bloomfield announced that the um, size of faith-based communities uh, gatherings is one of the specific issues that will be um, uh, recognised by Cabinet next Monday. So we don't know what that will mean, but we know that they are thinking seriously about it. And in actual fact, he he's gave thanks for the um, churches and other faith-based organisations for their, what he said, their fantastic support. So we're hoping that it will change. I understand that you want to follow the rules and keep everybody safe, but do you see any discrepancies here? I mean, malls have tens of people, if not hundreds of people in them, and you can have a funeral with 50 people, but you can't have a simple church service. Do you... we, we did say that, that we were, we were disappointed and, and asked why. Um, we're not completely happy with it, but the reasons that were given initially were just to, to keep people safe. And in actual fact, the, the whole um, venture, I suppose, of preparing our churches for just 100 people, like marking out the spaces, making sure that people get in safely and come out safely without you know close contact, um, registering them, tracking and tracking and tracing them, um, is, is quite a big effort, and I know some parishes who ask people to help, and people say, well, look, we're not prepared at, at this stage. If there's any danger, we're not prepared to do that. We'll just wait until it, it, you know the, the numbers go up and, it, and it's safer. So it's, it could be quite a challenge for us um, where you were to use the space that we have in some places just to mark it all out, use every second pew, and enough to get 100 people in there. And probably some churches wouldn't even take a hundred. But that would be your choice at that point. At the moment, you don't have a choice. You're restricted by the rules. Does it bother you at all that malls with hundreds of people in them can operate, yet a church service is, is off the agenda if there are more than 10 people? Well, we have said that. We, we said in, in a letter last week that it didn't seem to be consistent. Um, and we were hoping for a change, and that is what we continue to hope for, as long as people can be safe. So what are some of your priests telling you about regular mass goers? How are they managing? Most of them, and by far the priests are saying that people are happy. There's a few people who are not and who are emailing and saying, you know, we want the churches open to get back to mass as, as soon as possible. Um but it's a small minority. We are listening to them, and I've responded to lots of people and just trying to explain the very things that I've been in saying to you. Um, but it is a small minority. Most people, um, people have actually appreciated the online masses and also appreciated the opportunity themselves on a Sunday to to do something a little different, to pray a little differently as a family. Um, and we've encouraged people to do that because we, you know, Catholics have an obligation to to attend Mass on Sunday. But we've also been saying, well, while we're dispensing, we can do that under church law, um, we still want you to do something to acknowledge that Sunday is a special day. So many people have you know, taken the, the scripture readings of the day and reflected on them as a family or as a group which I think is a great thing because it's making an impact on people's lives, just thinking a little differently and thinking outside the square. Do you think COVID-19 will have changed the church for good? I'm wondering what will happen with um, communion, sharing wine and, and bread. Well, when the um, 
when the virus first started to um, to be felt in this part of the world, we we put practices in place saying that there would be, in the meantime, there would be no sharing of the chalice with the uh, with the, the consecrated blood, the precious blood, where we know sharing, and also, um, you know, people have the option of receiving communion in their hand or on their tongue. We said no communion on the tongue because quite often the priest or the minister of the Eucharist putting the host on someone's tongue it can easily touch their tongue, and most people have accepted that. And that th- may may change, even though. Um, some people still don't like receiving in the hand. The majority do by far. Some people don't like that. That may change in order to keep people safe. And generally people have responded to um, to that appeal to make sure that everything is, that is being done is to keep people safe. Do you, do you think that may change for good, though? Or until there is a vaccine, that these... Um well, it could, yeah, it could until there's a vaccine. Um, it's, it's hard to know. There have been so many issues facing society and, and facing the church. We don't know um, just what's going to happen in, in the future. Um, but because, and we did it once before when there was the threat of the bird flu some, some years ago, we asked people not to receive communion on, on the tongue, not to shake hands at the sign of peace. And people accepted that. But um, you can and, go and to I, a restaurant, sorry to interrupt Cardinal John, but you can go to a restaurant and share food from plates. You can go to a restaurant and share wine or any other kind of drink at close quarters. Why is the church different and being treated well, differently? The, the Prime Minister is saying that you can only do that in groups of 10. And the prepared, she's saying, from what I understand, that usually it's a group of people who, who have um, close contact. But you could have three or 400 people at a Mass uh, and that's slightly different, you know, because you, you, while we know that we have to track and trace, um, th- there's not that same social contact um, in, in that situation. So, But that has been our, our um, request for the government to think about that. And from what Dr Bloomfield said today, I think that they probably are thinking about that when he says, you know, at a public conference that they're going to be reconsidering the specific issue of of churches. And that's the Catholic Archbishop of Wellington, Cardinal John Dew.